Hey, Vanessa. How are you? Good. How you been? I'm doing well. Thanks. I love the zebra skin on the back. That's cool. <laughs> Some people might have an opinion on it, but it's okay. I like it. I think it's cool. I think it's cool. Thank you. Thanks for doing this, though. Yeah, no problem. I'm sorry. I just had a little bit of a complication. I didn't see, didn't have your email before, and then I got it there now. So perfect. As good as technology is, it's pretty complicated at times, isn't it? Yes, <laughs> things get lost in cyberspace. So, for people that don't know you, do you mind sharing your story a little bit? Sure. So I'm a, a show jumper for Team Canada. I'm from Calgary, Alberta, and I've been riding horses since I was a little girl. I'm always really attached to animals, passionate about horses, and I would say I've been show jumping uh, since quite a bit more seriously since I was probably 12, and I am now 31. So it's been uh, quite a career already. I was lucky enough to ride on the farm at home as a kid with my family, and then once I started show jumping, I really kind of the rest was history. I was smitten with the sport and have been lucky enough to be competing internationally for about 14 years now. Good Lord. That's a, that's quite the resume. <laughs> Have you yeah, always well, loved horses? Yeah, I, I was really attached even as a little kid. I was kind of that horse mad girl that never grew out of that phase. Um, thankfully, I think. Um, I've been lucky to actually get started in a few different areas with the horses. So I um, did a little trail riding, all kinds of everything when I was little. Uh, but my real passion is for show jumping. I'm lucky enough that even as I have my group of show jumpers that I work really closely with now, I have a couple of horses at our family farm that are kind of just for fun. Uh, so I always joke on our days off from training that with the show jumpers, we go ride other horses instead. So I it's very that. much so a lifestyle, a passion of mine that I've had my whole life. Is there one horse that you've always just loved and it's always going to be your horse that is with us still or not? You know, definitely uh, you build really close relationships with these horses. Like I think that people who aren't familiar with the uh, show jumping world or aren't even necessarily horse people don't recognize how strong their personalities are. Um, over the years, I've been really lucky to have a couple of favorites. Uh, one of them, his name is Danny. He's uh, retired at the farm right now. I bought him in Ireland. It would have been about 12 years ago now. Uh, and he was just a superstar for me in the ring, but an absolute character to be around as well. Like the strength of their personalities uh, really shines through and you're spending a lot of time with them uh, in high pressure situations, competing for uh, world ranking points, competing for money all over the globe. You get to have a really close relationship with. So the closest I would always make a comparison is it's like having your dog also be your coworker. Okay. Yeah. Are you my coworker, little man? <laughs> He's always with me, this little guy. Very <laughs> cute. <laughs> Some days a dog, but yeah, <laughs> I'm with very, you. Very, very cute. <laughs> yeah, no, I've, I've, like I say, I've been really lucky to kind of have horses in my life the whole time. There's definitely a couple special gems that stand out there. Has show jumping changed over the years or has it been the same throughout? Uh, show jumping's evolved a lot. Um, like any sport, it's gotten to be a lot more technical, a lot more sophisticated. Uh, for example, like going back uh, as recently as 30 years or so, people were buying um, x race horses off the track mm -hmm. and able to train them up to an Olympic level. Um, really where the sport has gone is a lot more technical. Uh, the jumps and the courses are more difficult. Uh, and they've really switched to more European breeding. Um, so the, the bloodlines you're looking at are really specialized. Um, and I think that the riders are treating ourselves like athletes, whereas maybe they didn't use to quite as much. There's a lot more cross training, sports psychology, nutrition, uh, making sure that you're kind of at your absolute peak to be able to perform and appreciating that as a rider, you are an athlete. It's not just uh, the horse, it's teamwork. So are you in uh, Calgary right now or where? Have you been? I'm not actually. I am in Wellington, Florida. Uh, there's a big competition that goes during the winter circuit here for three months, January, February, March. Mm -hmm. um, so really a lot of the show jumping world descends on Wellington kind of for that season, anywhere November to April. And I'm lucky enough to be able to be here competing these three months. Wow. Is, has it been hard with COVID and all of that? To Very much so. Yeah. You know, in some ways the horses were an absolute blessing, actually in some ways I would say in almost all ways. Um, we were down here in Florida when COVID kind of became 
uh, the situation that it is now. And we're here in March and I ended up bringing all of the horses home to Calgary, uh, brought my team up there and we really hunkered down on the farm. Um, it's not like another day job though, that you can close the office door and come back and work from home. Like these horses take so much care, uh, training exercise just on a daily basis to keep them mentally and physically sound. Uh, that I, even as we were in quarantine, I had the necessity to be at the barn every day. Uh, I was there five, six hours riding all the horses, making sure that they were taken care of doing anything that needed to be done. And it was really kind of essential. Um, you can't just, it's not like a dog. You can't put them in their uh, crate and leave them there. Not that you'd even do that with a dog, but they're even more um, susceptible to injuries when they're in their stall for prolonged periods of time. Um, they're really high performance athletes. They're used to being out two or three times a day for hand walks, for exercise, for, to be competing. Uh, they're getting baths, clips, clips, getting their feet done. So it's really not realistic to just be able to leave them in their stall. Right. Uh, so that was the silver lining is I actually got to be in Calgary for six straight months, which I never would be normally. I love Calgary. I'm so attached to my hometown. Uh, nowhere better in my very biased, but totally accurate opinion. Um, and it was really a pleasure to be able to be home for six months and enjoy that while also having the horses in the barn. So in some ways I got to spend more time with the animals I love. Like that's not something that I think uh, I take lightly as much as there was all of these elements where the show jumping world came to a stop. There was no competition throughout the summer. Um, I was separated from some of my team members who are Irish um, that I work really closely with. So it was a little bit isolating on one hand. But the flip side is I got to spend so much time in the barn with my horses. So I can't complain about that. Is it hard to practice in the wintertime for you guys? Or um, for us in Calgary, yes. Like obviously the winter weather is not helpful. We have an indoor arena to train in, but it's quite small. Um, so that's a large motivation to be able to be down here in Florida. We're competing at the very highest level against some of the top riders in the world that are based here. It's where a lot of the Team Canada selections for different team competitions uh, take place. And it's really important if you want to be part of that um, A squad to be here. Uh, and it doesn't hurt that the sun shines here while the snow falls in Calgary. So. Can you bring some back, please? <laughs> we'll work on that. <laughs> <laughs> now, You've done some things in the parade as well in the Calgary Stampede, which is remarkable. I have, yes. Um, I've been lucky enough to ride with the Smithfield Parade Entry uh, for a number of years. Smithfield is a Calgary company more than 100 years old, uh, making the kind of iconic cowboy hats. Uh, and we have uh, put in a parade entry uh, that I've had the pleasure of being part of, like I mentioned, riding side saddle in the parade. So not my normal show jumping type gig. Uh, something totally outside of the comfort zone riding inside saddle for me, but uh, we banded up all of the Palominos we could find and a couple of good looking cowgirls. And that was the plan. So. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What does it take to find the perfect horse to ride? It's so much about the partnership um, for what we're looking at, at our level, you need to have the very basics of, they need to be athletic. They need to be smart. They need to be willing um, but once you get over that threshold, like that's only enough to maybe get you to the ring to really be able to go and compete against the world's best. You have to have a little bit of like secret sauce, the special partnership between a horse and rider. And I think it takes a long time to build up. Um, for me, anything that you're getting in the ring in terms of results or good rounds before a year is a is a bonus. I really think it takes a year working with a horse to build that level of trust you're asking them to compete at the meter 60 level, which is the very top end five star Olympic world championship level. That's at the very max of a horse's physical capabilities. And if you haven't spent the time really cultivating that relationship and trust at, along the way, as you move up the grades, um, it's going to be really apparent. So to me, the best horse rider comp like combinations are the ones that really know each other really well and have that relationship. It's not necessarily the best rider or the best horse or the most athletic, but it's that partnership that they can come together and really execute a technical course. And how high are you guys jumping over? So it's a meter 60 is the top level. Okay. Um, but there's everything. If you go to your kind of local show, you'll have everything from X rails that are maybe uh, two feet all the way up to what we're jumping. Good Lord. And have you, is there fear within yourself at times? And 
And when you do have that fear, does a horse know it and feel you? I would say horses are really aware uh, animals. They pick up on your emotions. Um, I wouldn't say that fear is the right word. Um, for sure, it's a dangerous sport and you need to be uh, aware of that. I always think be take as many precautions as possible. Wear your helmet. Make sure you're riding a horse that you feel safe on, that's qualified. Make sure you do all your homework. Um, but once you get to the ring, I think when I get nervous, the right word isn't fear. It's more that like sense of nervousness about really wanting to do a good job. Um, but it, it does play a factor. Um, obviously, if you ride, you're going to fall. It's not fun to fall. So uh, the biggest thing is if something goes wrong, you try and get back on right away and uh, get back on on that positive line of thinking. What's one of your most proud moments in riding? Uh, there's been some really special ones. I have to say jumping at Spruce Meadows right in Calgary is really, really special. And I was third in the five-star Grand Prix there with my stallion Grand Cru. Uh, that was a couple of years ago now, but that was a really, really special kind of feeling to be like, hey, we're competing at the very top end of the sport and we're competitive here. We belong here. Uh, but sport? I have to say something I was really proud of just recently. I was in Spain competing in uh, November and I was the anchor rider for Team Canada in a Nations Cup over there. And I put in a clear round and that was a big, uh, that was the first time I jumped clear on a Nations Cup team. And it was like such a great feeling just to feel like that was the goal through the whole tour while we were over there and to really target that one event. And we were able to deliver when it really mattered. So I was proud of the level of execution we were able to have on that, that specific day. Now, being from Calgary, how often do you end up in the city? Because you're traveling around and competing. Not as much as I wish. Um, like I say, we're blessed with Spruce Meadows. They tend to have kind of five weeks of competition there a year. So those five weeks, I'll always be there. Usually they're the month of December. Um, but other than that, the show jumping schedule really goes 52 weeks a year. And of those 52 weeks, I'm usually competing anywhere from 25 to 35, depending on the group of horses I have. So it's a lot of time on the road. I wish I was home more. I, and I think long-term plans, I definitely would see myself settling in Calgary. But right now, if you want to be at the top of the sport, it involves a lot of traveling. For Team Canada, are we almost there or are you almost there at the top now? Yeah, I've represented uh, Canada in a number of Nations Cups. Yep. Uh, so show jumping is fundamentally an individual sport, but there are uh, occasionally uh, specific competitions uh, where four riders will compete as a team in what we call the Nations Cup. And I've competed on five of those at this point. Oh, folks. Okay. Now, what will it take for you to get to the next level? Or have you hit that peak yet in where you want to be? I think that really it's a matter of setting which goals we really want to target to. So one of my big goals was competing at World Cup finals. Uh, it is a worldwide qualification process. They have qualifiers in countries you wouldn't even think they have show jumping. Uh, so a very, very international field. And then the World Cup finals uh, take place every year and it's an indoor final. And actually last year I did qualify. Uh, so I was one of the top two Canadians to run through those qualifiers, be able to win enough points. Thank you. Uh, and it was kind of one of those moments that World Cup finals were supposed to be in Las Vegas in April. I found out that I was uh, on one of the top two and qualified to go the beginning of March. And then two weeks later, everything came to a grounding halt. And three weeks later, World Cup finals were canceled. And that was when I really felt like COVID was uh, kind of crashing in all around me and realizing like this was going to have not just a couple weeks effect where you would hunker down and in two months time go back to life as normal. It was really a long term um, consideration. So we qualified for World Cup finals. They always say when you put things out into the universe, universe, what your goals are, you need to be really specific. And I'd always said, I really want to qualify for World Cup finals. So going forward, I really want to jump at World Cup finals. Uh, so right. we qualified and unfortunately the final was canceled in the year we qualified, but I'd like to put it back on the agenda and try and qualify again. What do you do to keep yourself physically fit to ride these horses? It's a lot of cross training. Um, on one hand, there's nothing to really get fit to ride other than riding. Sure. Um, so when I'm kind of in the, the swing of co uh, competition, I would be riding anywhere from three to five horses a day, anywhere from half an hour to an hour per horse. 
Um, so there's a lot of time in the saddle um, that you have to do, but I also try and work out anywhere from minimum three on a bad white week, but kind of four to seven days a week. Uh, and I really mix it up a lot. I go to the gym, I do Pilates, I do yoga. I have a great trainer that I work with. Um, it really just depends on where I'm at, where I'm at. Sometimes you're in a hotel room and you got to kind of motivate yourself just to do your own workout on the floor. Uh, and then other times like down here in Florida, we have a wonderful facility to train at and you're able to go and work out, work with some of the great trainers and really try and Is it a lot of core strength. It's mainly core strength and balance. Yeah. Um, I think your ability to hold your body in kind of awkward positions um, where you're a little bit out of balance so that you're not interfering with the horse's balance uh, does nothing but serve you, serve you well. Like I have to say, I got a lot more serious about my fitness probably five years ago. Uh, and it has made a tremendous difference in my ability to control my body. And in that way, be able to have kind of control about what I'm doing with the horse. And what do, what do horses naturally eat mm -hmm. that you guys feed them? Not naturally, but you know. They, it's like a science lab in our feed room. <laughs> um, basically like hay, grass, but once you get into this level, there's a lot of different kinds of supplements, oats, grains, uh, different nutrients that you're making sure they get pastes, powders, the whole thing. So it is, a, it, it's a high, I would say I pay a lot more attention to my horse's nutrition than I do my own. So That's like me with this guy, he's on a raw yeah. food diet <laughs> and all these things. And... Yeah. High maintenance animals in our lives. Hey, you know what? We love them though, don't we? Yes. Yes. Is there something you've learned during this pandemic that you've kind of felt better about yourself personally? Like a growth, on growth? Mm -hmm. 100% I would say it has been a real focus on it sounds so cliche and so trite but like the important things um, but I suppose with me going from show to show you sometimes get a little bit on the treadmill of feeling it's all about the next result and COVID gave me a chance to really slow down spend time with the horses like really get into the nitty-gritty about some of our training get like we focus on the details but also just be able to enjoy riding and enjoy the process of training a horse without that pressure of competition and I think that's something I want to take forwards with me um, as we as hopefully we return to post-COVID times uh, and the schedule gets a little bit more normal is being able to remember how important it was to spend some time at home and spend some time training um, and that it wasn't just down period we don't need to be working but also to be enjoying the time with the horses so it was a good reminder about that and I have to say I was um, grateful for the opportunity to slow down a little bit. It's really remarkable to watch you get on on the field and just your focus it's a, you're a different person like you're <laughs> the same person but there's the, you're like game mode let's go go time how did yeah. it switch and then how do you switch back to being yourself? Um, I think it's like, you kind of talk about the, the switch, but it's being able to integrate the two, um, about being really focused without getting, you, you have to keep things in perspective, um, without getting too overblown about, oh, this is a big deal. This is a big Grand Prix. I keep always going back to being like, we're qualified to be here. We are well prepared. I know what I'm doing. Go over your plan. And it really feels like everything else melts away, um, it's funny right now we're competing in COVID with no crowds and it is so much fun to jump in front of a big crowd because you do feel the energy, but you really only feel the energy afterwards. Um, after you've completed your round, like maybe when you show up, you're like, Oh, this is cool. There's a big, big crowd. But as soon as I get on my horse, it is me and my horse. Oh. And there could be two people watching or there could be 10,000 people watching the experience in the ring. It's such a high speed technical sport that's a matter of millimeters sometimes there's not a lot of room to focus on anything else uh, so I definitely have a couple of kind of mental routines breathing exercises that I exercise um, with regularly and try and channel when I'm in the warm-up ring but it's amazing how just being on a horse is like grounding and focusing in itself how does a horse and yourself travel like from Canada to Ireland to that's everyone's favorite question <laughs> um, 
So when we're traveling in North America, we largely travel by transport track. Um, I use a number of commercial shippers. They have these huge, big horse trailers, and it's actually really comfortable for the horses, the way that they travel. Um, when we go, they have enough room to be in a box stall. They can move around a little bit. They can eat. They can lay down if they want to. It's quite comfortable for them. But the really cool thing is when they go to Europe, they travel on these pallets, uh, two or three abreast, that they hoist up into the plane and then roll into the belly of the plane. Uh, so if you want to check it out, I actually believe Spruce Meadows on their YouTube channel did a really cool video of it because it is everyone's favorite question is how do you get the horses around the world? So Perfect. they fly on planes. That would be pretty cool. I would love to see that. Yeah. Yeah, now, Vanessa, <clears throat> before we end this conversation, I wanted to ask you, what do you have to tell the young boy or girl in you that want or that is going to come up and want to be the next you? Oh, um, that's a flattering question um, for sure. But I would say if horses are really your passion, um, there don't get caught up in the idea of like, oh, the lifestyle of being an athlete or anything. If you're in it for the lifestyle, it's going to wear thin really fast. Um, but if you really have that passion and desire to work with horses, I would say learn from the absolute best people you can. Um, there are is so much material available online now but the benefit of just going to a horse show and being able to watch is huge. I would say the riding community is really, it seems inaccessible, but if you get a chance to ask a question or chat to one of the riders, I find people are actually really keen to share their love of horses and to talk about what they're working on. Again, we have some amazing facilities in Calgary. There's Rocky Mountain Show Jumping uh, and Spruce Meadows, which are southwest of the city. They are incredible venues with some world-class riders. We are so spoiled to have that right in our backyard. Um, go and watch as much as possible and try and work with the best people you can find. Thank you so much for today, though. I appreciate your time. Yeah, it was wonderful. Nice to meet you, and uh, thank you for getting in touch.